Really? Are we both in the picture? I think we are both in the okay. picture. So, Martin, did you see the apology from Greg's the Baker today? Oh, about putting the sausage roll in place of baby Jesus. That's right. Yeah. And I was wondering what would be the, the least insulting piece of bakery from Greg's to put in the place of our Lord. Steak bake? Cornish pasty? Difficult to know. Uh, difficult to know. I, you could... Yes, you could find, I would have thought you could just find a fairly simple roll that if you hmm. wrapped a little napkin around its could middle... Be, could be fairly inoffensive. It would, it would look close enough. Yeah. So what else have I you think been thinking about this I week? wasn't thinking about that at all. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on. I, I, I noticed it and passed on, I ah. think. Um, I, I suppose I've been thinking, I mean, mentioning that... Um, that we suddenly find ourselves uh, being surrounded by Christmas. Mm. Um, and it, I, I'm sure it doesn't get earlier every mm. year, but it feels like it gets earlier every year. Uh, of course, if we're in the States, we will be spared this for a while because we'd have Thanksgiving um, next week. But uh, I, that sense of impending Christmas mm. for me brings a sense of, oh, my goodness, we've got to get this done, I've got to do that, I've got to do the other... Um, and somehow, certainly in my thinking, my horizon extends to Christmas and I don't think much beyond it. So there's all these deadlines that kind mm. of pile up in a great sort of crash um, just before Christmas. And, and I'm sure, and it's not just about life in church, I'm sure there's a sense that for many people things seem to accumulate uh, or, or, or deadlines, things we've got to do, things mm. we've got to finish. And, th and this time of year feels quite crowded, quite mm. overburdened. Um, and for those of us in the life of the church, we've actually been sort of going full tilt since the beginning of September, and so this feels like quite a long stretch. Uh, and and I was struck uh, actually reading um, the sermon preached uh, for last Sunday um, <clears throat> in uh, Nadia Botts Weber's um, church, not by her, but I presumed by her assistant, looking at the um, the, f the foolish wise and foolish virgins mm. passage, and and just drawing out of that that um, the the their reaction was oh my goodness we've forgotten to buy the oil we get to get but you know, let's let's turn around and go and get some mm. oil we've run out da, 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 panic panic panic. Um, whereas actually uh, the 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 preacher was saying the wise response would have been to say, well, actually, we could probably survive without the oil. It would be hmm. much better just to wait mm. and to wait for the Lord to arrive. Well, that's, that's interesting. I was um, just last week uh, talking to some people about Therese of Lisieux in conversation with her sister Pauline in the uh, convent and how they turned to uh, appearing before God uh, when they died. And both of them said, well, we'd appear with very little. You know, we wouldn't have anything, you know, mm -hmm. a bit like with no oil. And Pauline said, uh, oh, I'd feel really sorry about that. And Therese said, oh, no, I'd feel fine about that. My hands would be empty and then ready to receive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. So there's something <clears throat> in that then, isn't yeah. there, about about saying, OK, why, did we, <clears throat> why is our reaction to think, oh, we've got to rush off and do mm. this, we've got to rush off and do that? And it, it's a spiritual reaction as much as a practical mm. reaction. Uh, and then looking at this Sunday's gospel, which is the, the parable of the talents, OK, mm. our response to that, we, we and sermon after sermon is, um, well, we need to be about like the one who's uh, got the five talents and really worked hard and earned another five mm. talents because they've been so sharp and wise and astute mm. and they've used their gifts well and that's what God wants us to do. But there's this little phrase at the beginning about g being given talents according to their ability. Hmm. And you, so immediately I think I get the sense of, ah, all right, God gives us what we need. And in giving us what we need, gives us the capacity to use that well. Hmm. So it's not about making a huge effort. Hmm. And the problem with the one with the, the, the guy with the one talent wasn't that um, he said, well, actually, I haven't got a great deal here, but um, I can do this modest thing of putting it in the mm. bank. Um, he goes and thinks, oh, because I'm going to lose it and what mm. will happen? And da, 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 da. Um, I'll go and bury it. So huge effort, dig a hole, mm. put it in the ground. Um, rather than saying, what, 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 what's, the, what's the appropriate, the, the wise response to what I've received mm. 
to enable me to receive the Lord. That's that's what it's all about, mm. isn't it? The kingdom is about how we receive mm. the Lord. And so I I've just I found myself thinking about those and thinking, what do we how can we release ourselves from this pressure to feel we've got to do this or do that or respond in mm. this way, respond, rush around to do that, mm. and just simply say, Okay, no, we've got sufficient. Mm. The Lord has given us sufficient. Let's accept that, acknowledge that, do with it what we can mm. straightforwardly. And uh, and one of the ways that I mean, for me, that's just so important to keep all of this in perspective is simply the discipline of prayer Mm. and spending time, the beginning and the end of each day in some form or other, just saying, here I am, Lord, Um, empty hands, uh, a few words uh, to listen and receive. Mm. And that puts it for me, that casts it Mm. all into the right perspective. Mm. Hmm. How about you? I've just used well, up all ten minutes now. Well, so. well, <laughs> well, you're sparking some stuff for me on on the uh, the parable of the talents. I mean, what, one of the things that always strikes me about that is the person with five talents who makes five more, and the person with two talents who makes two more. The landowner, aka God, says exactly the same thing to mm-hmm. them: mm-hmm. "Well done, good and faithful servant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you've been faithful with a little; you will be put in charge of much. Enter into the joy of your master." Mm-hmm. So clearly, the landowner isn't interested in maximising no, profit no. in any shape or form. And he could, say, could have said exactly the same to the guy with the one talent if yeah. he put it in the bank. Yeah. So so what's going on here that that, um, that, that the landowner is approving of? I think it's this use in a generous and risky way of what they are given. Um, and I think that's the problem with the one who has only the one yeah. talent, yeah. that actually in burying it in the ground, he's not not entering into the spirit of his master. And what's more, he caricatures his master yeah, as, as actually reaping and, where yeah, he doesn't yeah, sow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the landowner sows everywhere and sows mm-hmm. liberally. So no wonder the landowner says to him, you wicked and you lazy servant, mm-hmm. because he's um, you know basically said all these terrible things about his master to hide his own laziness and bury it in the ground. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there's, there's something here that also relates to me. I don't know if you saw Martin Percy's piece in the Telegraph the other day about... Um, I didn't read the telegram. Oh, I'm sorry, the tallywag. Um, well, anyway, he was talking about how he reckons that a lot of the institutional church's push on growth is having an adverse effect on clergy well-being. Mm-hmm. And I thought, well, that's really interesting because actually you look at people like St. Paul, some of the great evangelists and the monks who've, mm-hmm. who've actually been, you know, on God's mission, they don't seem to actually be adversely affected by by you know doing this in terms of their well being. If anything, they've they've thrived on it. So what is it if that is the case that is causing this to happen? And presumably, disturbingly, part of it is we're rooting our identity on institutional approval yeah, 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 yeah. and success. Well, in the inter- institutions, institutional success, isn't institutional it? success, yeah. rather than rooting our identity in Christ. And that that takes me back to the parable of the talents, because actually what that parable suggests is it's about entering into the spirit which of, of, of the landowner, which is, the, if you like, this hip-shooting hip uh, gambler rather than the cautious and prudent lawyer, mm-hmm. and rather than having a penny-pinching bookkeeping approach, which you then project onto the landowner, that you simply enter into the spirit of that, you know, casting your bread upon the waters and seeing what happens. So... You know, I think um, if we can use that lens to see growth and do you see how it's entering into the spirit of our Lord and his generous and extravagant way, that's a different perspective. Because the landowner takes risks simply by giving five mm. to this person, two to this person, one to this person, and whatever the landowner gives to you and gives to me, all sorts of risks are being taken mm. in that, and we're to respond yeah. in the same way. Yeah. Right. Good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.